These are the rails that the spider is going to attach to on three points and roll up and down. The alternative to these is to use something like uh, Delrin V rollers, which actually just ride, you know, on the groove on the track here. I didn't want to go with those because I wanted to stick with the original linear design to start out. Um, and honestly, the cost of those rollers isn't actually much cheaper than the three knockoff rails. So we're going to try our luck at these. And in the future, if we do build a bigger unit, um, or want to try something aside from the rails, we'll give the V-Rollers a shot. So to start out, um, since we're removing this from the rail, you're going to want something like this. Uh, this is just the lid off a storage container um, to hold or work over because if these balls fall out, they are a freaking nightmare to find. So don't do that. Don't lose them um, where you can't find them easy. You need some paper towel and then a lint-free cloth. You want to make sure that the cloth we're going to use to wipe the rails, um, clean everything, and you know wipe up the excess grease isn't going to leave anything behind that could get caught in the carriage and cause it to move like junk. And then of course your grease and something like a Q-tip. I just use these wooden ones. The end actually works really well for applying this stuff. I'm going to start off by just removing these zip ties that they put on to keep it from coming off and shipping. There is nothing here to keep these from popping off once you're ready to use them. So be very careful when assembling that you don't move this past the edge and have all your stuff drop out. Um, as you'll see inside, there is a little wire cage that does keep the ball bearings from coming out. So it's not something that's going to happen, um, you know, every time you move it. So don't worry about that. We just move it to the end here, work over your container, and then slowly pull it off. That's it. And then here looking inside you can see you've got this metal cage here um, that keeps the balls in place. And there they are. They just recycle through the chamber inside of here in a circle. And that gives you that nice, uh, smooth, steady motion. We're going to start with one side at a time. Um, just give them a quick wiping to remove any oil that might be in there. After everything's clean, I'm just going to use my little uh, disassembly spatula here to remove as many balls as I can from just one side at a time so I can grease the back of the track to start. You can just gently pull up on this cage here and then they'll just start to fall out. Just give them a little bit of encouragement here towards the center. And again, you don't want to lose these because they will be a major nightmare to either find or replace. As you're doing this, also watch your hands. They do stick to skin real easily, and you don't want to, you know, accidentally pick one up and then drop it somewhere on the workbench or on the floor. We're just going to take a little bit of our grease here, and then just apply it to the back. And then watch your stick as well because again, uh, the ball bearings will stick to the grease and they might come out with you and you don't want to dip them into your pot. That would really suck to have to fish them out if you even noticed it went missing. Now I'm not too worried about applying too much grease here because this is actually going to squeeze all the excess out. Um, so it's really hard to overdo this. Once you have the channel greased up, um, we can start putting the balls back in. So I just like to get a little on my finger pick up a few at a time, and then just rub them around in the grease to get it covered. And then they'll actually just push right back into the fence, like so. Here's our carriage after packing both sides. Um, don't be alarmed if you have a small gap there. That's because there is one less ball than is necessary. 
um, to keep a little slack. If this was an official Highwind unit, there would actually be a lubricating bar here, um, which is how those keep lubrication up. Um, if it is a Highwind rail that you're dealing with, you don't have to go through this much trouble, just for the cheap Chinese ones. Um, it may look like we have a lot of grease packed in there compared to what you normally do for something like this, but that's because um, we have to have this distribute across all of the balls and the railing inside here. So it's okay to overpack it a little um, because actually as you'll see a lot of this will get squeezed out, at least the excess, when we reattach it to the rail. So I'm going to do that now. Just slides right on and you want to do it real slowly because it's going to compress these balls and they're going to want to fly out of the fence. So if you do see them bunching up you might want to push against the fence um, just to keep them from popping out. Just take it nice and easy and you'll be okay. There we go. After you get it pushed in, check the ends here just to make sure no ball bearings got pushed out. This is where they'll show up. And then just run it over the rail a bit until it starts to smooth out. Once it smooths out, go ahead and pull it out again. Very carefully. And you'll see that most of that grease now um, has disappeared. So I'm going to repack these bearings just from the top. And then we're going to slide it through again. So here we don't have to remove them. I'm just going to add it through the top here push it down into the bearings. And again, make sure you check your finger so that none of these balls sneak off and end up in the uh, in the grease pot. Now at this point you're going to have a lot of extra grease um, sitting on the rail here, which is pretty gross. Um, actually one of the nice things about these linear rails is that um, all of the lubrication is pretty much self-contained. You're going to get a light film on this inner run here, um, but nothing major on the rail itself. Um, so it's not going to attract as much dirt as a system with open lubrication would. These also have, if you move it to the top here, these little fangs um, that go in that track and clear out any debris, which is really handy. And then the top here actually wipes it as well, so it keeps that rail nice and clean. This is one other thing you may need to adjust on these. Um, on one of my rails, it would slide smoothly in one direction down the track, but was real rough on the way up, back up. Um, and what I had to do is loosen the two screws, slide this a few times up and down the rail, and then I tightened them again, um, which adjusted this little uh, red guard piece back to the proper position. So if you find that it does seem to scrape in one direction and not the other, it might be a good idea to pop these off and then just run them a few times so that they kind of reseat to a better position. And that's it. Our rails are lubricated and ready to go. I have a little bit to clean up here, but then we're just going to put the, um, the M3 by 8 screws and nuts through here to attach it to the extrusion and these rails will be ready to run. Um, one final note on lubrication, you do want to be careful about using something that's too heavy. This stuff, um, this Neo Grease, is pretty light for its weight, so I haven't had any problems with it in something like this. Um, but if you use wheel bearing grease or something too heavy, those balls are not going to roll and run smoothly. They're actually just going to kind of slide and lock in place. And that's going to wear your rail out quicker and, you know, not give you the smoothest motion. So just be careful. Don't use something too thick. I also have tried the Super Lube that others have mentioned and I found um, that it was a bit rougher than the Neo Grease when I was testing. So, yeah, play around with lubric lubricants a bit and find the one that feels best to you. But just be careful not to go too thick.